So, what did you get for the slope? Well, pi squared over g. Yeah, if you have t equals 2 pi root l over g, then you get t squared equals 4 pi squared l over g. Or in other words, t squared equals 4 pi squared over g l. So if you make a plot here, this is l in meters, and this is t squared in seconds squared, then you'll get a straight line. And the slope of this is 4 pi squared over g. So then what would the g equal? That would be 4 pi squared over m. Yeah, 4 pi squared over g is a constant. Yeah. Got that? Now, KJ made a very interesting point, which I think is actually worth looking at. This isn't the only way to make a straight line graph. So, KJ, what did you suggest as a way to make a straight line graph? Yeah. Using logs. <coughs> Let's see what happens if you use logs, because I've not tried it before, but I, I wonder what result we would get. Can I scroll down? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Two? Yeah? Okay. Let's just see what happens if we try to use log. So if I said t equals uh, 2 pi root l over g, I think the first thing I'll do is I'll just change that into t 2 pi g to the minus a half l to the half. First thing. Now if I use logs, I'll get log t equals log 2 plus log pi minus a half log g plus a half log l. Now, if I look at this, if I call this, oh, not two blacks, where's my red gone? If I call this y and this x, <coughs> then what graph will I get? If I put a, a log y here and a log L here, what type of graph will I get? One over two. I'll get a straight line. Mm -hmm. Yeah? But uh, the slope of this is always a half mm -hmm. because of this. Mm -hmm. So I could only get the G from this graph by looking at this, looking at the C. So the C would be log 2 pi minus a half log g. So you could say, what's that now? A half log g equals log 2 pi minus c. So if I multiply that by 2 and then put an e. Yeah, so I could get a formula for g like this. I could say g is e power 2 times log 2 pi minus c, where c is the point I get on the graph. And uh, the only problem with that is it's a little bit harder to deal with because now we have an E and a log, whereas it, at least previously doing it this way, I only have to deal with a pi squared. Uh, the reason we like straight lines on physics graphs is because it's easier to deal with them. But nowadays with computers, it's, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but in the past, you wouldn't want to be using E and log because... You'd have to have decimals then. Yeah. Uh, so this is the way we'll approach it. So that's fine. Now, the next problem is how to get the L and the T. So again, we make a table. And we need many different L's and many different T's. <coughs> so let's say L in meters. So we should start with 1 meter. And then 0 0.9. And then... 0.8, etc., etc., all the way down until we have 0 0.1 meters. And then we measure the time in seconds. But it's not actually the time that we really want, it's rather the time squared. But there is a little bit of a problem. It's not actually very accurate to swing at once. 
and record it. Instead, yeah, it'd be more accurate if we let it swing 10 times and then divide our answer by 10. So what you actually do is get the time for 10 oscillations and then divide by 10 and then after you divide by 10 you square it. So divide by 10 and then square. Uh, but also don't forget now I'm missing a column here. What did I not include? What did I miss here? Come on guys, I said it's like if you only learn one thing. Yeah. So, <clears throat> what I did not include here was the error on measuring the 10 seconds. And here, what did I not include? I also did not include the error, the uncertainty, in measuring the uh, length. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Um, actually. Yeah. So, for this experiment, it's actually best if each time you do the same thing twice. So you let it swing 10 times, record, and then re repeat it. <laughs> now, you might say, well, why do that? Because you should get the same answer if you did it the same way twice. Would you get the same answer? No. No, and the reason you don't get the same answer is because uh, of the uncertainty. So, really, now, it's, now the table's getting even bigger. Again, I'm running out of space. Uh, you have T110 and T210. So you do each one twice. Now the reason you do each one twice is because then you can calculate the uncertainty here. <coughs> so for example, if the first time you got 12 seconds and the second time you got 13 seconds, what's the uncertainty? 1 1 no. Uh, 0 0.5. Yeah, 0 0.5. Uh, if you did it first and you got 12.0 seconds and then you did it again and got 13.0 seconds, then the time you should use for the 10 is 12.5 seconds. And so the uncertainty in the 10 is half a second. Because the time here isn't like the angles. When it is 10, you know it's probably 10 on your stopwatch because your stopwatch can do 10.1 or 10.2. So you have to do each one twice and then use this formula. Um, the maximum time minus the minimum time divided by 2. Now where did you see that formula today? Something like this. With, no, with the, um, the angles. Remember when I said the, this, the uncertainty in the OR? It was the bigger one minus the smaller one divided by 2. But we have to be careful with that one because when it was 12, it wasn't really 12 because we can't quite see the 13 or the 14. So if it was 12, it would be like 12.5 uh, we said for an example. Yeah. So this table is a little bit more complicated. In fact, I don't really have everything here. This is what you should have in your table. You should have length in uh, what unit? Mm. Meters. And then the uncertainty in the length. And then you have the time for 10 once, and then you have the time for 10 twice, then you have the time for 10, which is the average of these two. And that's the value you use. No, it's not, because we're not finished yet. Then you need to get the time for 1. Is this the value you use on your graph? Mm -hmm. No, not yet. Then you need the time squared. Now this is the value that you use. But I never said anything about the uncertainty. So you have the uncertainty in the time for 10. That, we said, was the bigger one minus the smaller one divided by 2. But we don't care about the uncertainty for the 10. What do we care about? The uncertainty for the 1? No, the uncertainty for the time squared. Now, how to calculate that? 
it's not as easy as you think and that is one of the lessons we'll have when we talk about what to write in the report so when you do this experiment uh, you should just record this record this and you can record this and the calculations you can add in later after the experiment now we haven't talked about the measurement uncertainty the length uncertainty so what is the uh, what is the error here well this one's a bit strange because we can go as accurately as uh, a millimeter they're in millimeters but something feels wrong about that because it doesn't quite feel like we can measure the length of a string to a millimeter using this and you're right because we have a little bit of problem with the uh, the fact that this here has a has a length it's in, in, in the pendulum equation it imagines that this actually is a point but in real life there's no such thing as a point so this has a length here this makes it difficult to measure the length because where exactly do we put it well we should put it in the center but uh, how sure can we be that we actually got the center no we should use two below oh you mean like something to cramp it yeah yeah and ah. then use the ruler to measure it yeah but that's great but then we also have the problem with the string stretches so my point is maybe we should just we should accept the fact that we can't measure this as accurately as we think because not only do we have to make a judgment here we also have to remember that when we measure it perhaps the string is uh, a little bit loose should be a little bit tight you know so what do you think is the uncertainty here well this fella here is I'd say you could probably measure uh, about as accurate as half a centimeter because if you measure this wrong or if the string is not tight this could be as much as half a centimeter mistake I think so for all of the measurements of the length it's about half a centimeter except maybe when we get down to the get down to 10 centimeters it feels like we should be able to measure 10 quite accurately so rather than maybe saying half a centimeter maybe we should say a percent so perhaps we should say the error in measurement is uh, one percent on average so if it's a one percent error then for a hundred centimeters what's our error one centimeter for 50 centimeters what's our error 0.5 and then for 10 centimeters what's our error yeah 0.1 which I can kind of believe but that sounds a bit too messy and anyway you'll get the same result if you just say the average is about half a centimeter error because that is a half a centimeter on average is the error so for this one just say half a centimeter okay now let's have a look at how to do this one uh, so this does anyone know what this is called a what one ah yeah no it has another name cramp and stand sounds like boring yeah not that lee now I left it. Ah, I left the. Uh, there's a. No, no, no. There, I left it in the office. There's a thing that clamps here. But anyway, it doesn't matter because I can just clamp this one backwards. No, no, it's okay. I, I hope I can do this. No, no, you're not. The, well, this actually works okay. What's wrong? are you watching so you start with one meter but I won't do one meter because you can't see so I'll start with 10 centimeters uh, yeah okay so I'll just uh, I'll just uh, put this around here all right so let's see now listen it's nice if you can get it as 10 centimeters but you don't have to there's nothing in the calculations that says it has to be 10 so if the best you can do is 11 or 9 that's fine it doesn't matter that's 20 no actually you know what? I'll do 20 as an example that's 21 so let me just swing it around one more time 
So it's 18 and a half. I think I'd rather have 21. Uh, okay, that's 21. Right, so you're to do this twice. If you take out your stopwatch on your phone, please. Now you'll be working in pairs for this. Got a stopwatch? Yeah. Yeah. So what would be the best way to do this? Shall I say start and you press start? Yeah. <laughs> well, that could that that could be okay, but I think what would be better is if I have it swinging and then when I'm ready for you to start the stopwatch, I say start when it's uh, back at a. So in other words, it has a cleaner start because if I say start and you have to press it, there's a bit of a a delay, but at least as it's swinging, I can see when I can get ready to say start at the at a time that can match with yours, and then I will say stop. Okay, so um, are you ready? Yeah. Now I need. Now you're supposed to do this twice, but because there's many people with stopwatches, I can cheat and just have two measurements used on two different phones rather than doing it twice. Okay, so are you ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Stop. Now, what did you get? Nine. Nine point two three. And what did you get over there? Nine point two five. All right. Nine point two three seconds. Nine point two five seconds. <laughs> the error was zero point zero one. Ooh. No, no, because remember the time that we use is 9.24 seconds, plus or minus 0 0.01 seconds. Right, now, I know I'm supposed to make a table and a graph, but using this value, just this one value, let's see how good my estimate for G is. So what did we say? T, uh, T squared equals, what was it, 4 pi squared over G L. So my g in this example only 4 pi squared l over t squared. So can you take out your calculator and type in 4 pi squared times 0 0.21 over uh, 0 0.924 squared. See what you get. Can I? Yeah, because 9 was for 10. We wanted for 1 in the formula. Oh. 9.71. It's not even close. What? 9.71. 9.71 off of one measurement. You're supposed to do this 10 times oh. and make a graph. And anyways, it might not have been exactly 21. Let's, let's make this a little bit more accurate. It is object. No, it's not 21. What are we doing? It's no, it's it's more like 21 and three quarters. <laughs> 21.75. 10. Now you see that tiny, tiny difference of three quarters. No, was it even three quarters? Yeah, three quarters of a centimeter was changed our value from 9.7 to 10. So you can imagine if you do this 10 oh, times. 10. Yeah. Wow. So it, it's very um, it's very sensitive yeah. to, the, to the measurements of the length. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, you do this twice and then you do 10 different lengths. You got the idea? Yeah. Now this, again, this experiment is an experiment to calculate the value of G. But of course this is not the only way and the only experiment you can do to calculate the G. What's another way you can imagine? Could you imagine another experiment to calculate the value of G? Barometer. Yes. In a very weird way. Something else though. Huh? Yeah, but like an experiment in a classroom, what could you do? Well, we can jump there. Well, yeah, but make it more an experiment rather than a playground activity. Throw it a ball. No, no, see, that's too... 
too, no, no, it's too inaccurate. Make it more formal experiment. Because remember in the exam when they say describe an experiment to measure G, it doesn't matter which experiment. You can use oh, this one. No, 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 no. Come on, guys, think about it. If you could make any experiment to measure G, what's the easiest one to do to describe? Spring. Yeah, but how to set this up? Okay, good. Now we're thinking. So we'll have a vacuum. You can buy, you can get a tube and you can connect these to uh, a pump to make the, yeah, to make the vacuum. So we have a vacuum, good. Okay, good. Okay, now remember, you know, there's no money limit, so we can use whatever equipment we want. Dough ball. <laughs> Pokeball. Uh, what's next now? Okay, good. So, uh, we could measure it, yeah, but think about the formula. If we're going to be using U, V, A, T, and S, we need to know three of these things, right? And we already know the U, because it's going to be zero. Yeah. Um, we, know the S. we could know the S, and we could know the T. The, that's all we need. Yeah, so. Uh, a meter stick? No, 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 no. Fancier. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Guys, come on, come on. Just no, no, no time limit. Time measurement. Time machine. No. What the fuck? Come on. To measure time. Do we yeah. A millisecond or what? <laughs> what you could do, okay? Machine for measuring time. You could have here a magnet. And this magnet can hold this here. Mm -hmm. And then what you can do is have this connected up to a stopwatch. And have this connected up here to a laser. So when you press the button here, you can imagine a button here. You press this and the magnet turns off. And when the magnet turns off, at the same time the ball falls and the computer starts the watch. And then once the ball breaks the laser, then the computer can stop the watch. So you're not relying on a human to do this. You have a computer that has an exact start, because remember we can make a solenoid where you have the current. So as soon as you press the button, the current turns off. The magnet is dropped the magnetic field is dropped and the metal ball falls and then the moment the current turns off this can be the signal to start the stopwatch because um, you can have something here uh, this is called a knot so when there is no current there's a current here mm -hmm. so it means when you turn the current off of the solenoid the stopwatch starts and again you can do something similar here uh, maybe, maybe when this is on there's a current and then so when you want this to be broken, then this one can signal the st this one can signal the stop, and this one can be the input into the, the into the uh, computer for the start. You know, when in the exam they ask you to describe an experiment, it doesn't have to be one that you actually did. You could even imagine your own one with your own equipment, if you can think of an easier, more accurate way to do it. Well, maybe this would be easier to describe, but the problem is doing it this way. In both examples, you have to explain what formula you're using. So in this formula, you would say, ah, you have V equals U plus AT. No, sorry, that's not the one. You have S equals UT, which is zero, a half AT squared. So you'd say G is 2S over T squared. And that's maybe a little bit easier to describe than the other formula. <coughs> yeah. 
No. Not not for these, no. no. Not in the lab book hand report. In the type report, maybe. But we'll talk about that. Okay. Now, um, you can see that the reason we're doing this one, there's two reasons here. It's cheaper. Okay, and, and it's really hard for you to break anything. Now, that's not an invitation for you to try to break something. Because I've had students break things before. Okay, but it's, it's harder to break this. It'd be quite easy to break the vacuum tube. Yeah? Well, nobody's broken this one yet. But for the electricity one that would be next, uh, I've had people burn out the wires because they left it switched on. Oh, this is so uh, no, no, and this is the reason why I put a smaller battery into the experiment because previously it was done with nine volts until somebody burnt it out the circuit. Uh, so then I reduced it to one and a half it's volts. Not a nine volts. It's not four nine volts was enough for the student to burn the circuit by leaving the switch on for too long. So you could smell in the room something was burning and then the circuit snapped. Yeah, I <laughs> uh, is there anything else to say about this? Oh yeah, um, the angle is not important but don't have it too great or too small. Uh, the problem with too small means it's kind of harder to see when it starts and the problem with too large, does anyone know? Uh, two pro anybody know? There's two problems with it being too large. Uh, first problem is the ball will be moving faster, which means more air resistance, which makes it more inaccurate. So that's the first problem. There's a second problem with having the angle too large. The angle. The duration, uh, like it's not linear. Uh, yes, I get your point. So how how can you say this is the problem? We say it's less linear because if you remember the proof of the formula, the proof kind of assumes that <laughs> this is moving on a straight line. Now in real life, it's not moving on a straight line, it's moving on a, a small circle. But if you make this quite large, then you make your approximation worse because it's very clear it's not a straight line. At least when it's kind of small, it nearly looks like a straight line. Yeah. Okay, I think we're okay with this one. When's our next physics class? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now the circuit one will be harder because we have to set up the circuit. The last one will be the hardest. 